What's up guys, Mike Dakota here. Today we're gonna to go over the problem Farida, Princess Farida. Once upon a time there is a cute princess called Farida living in a castle with her father. On the way to the castle there are many monsters. Each of them have a gold coin. Although they're monsters, they will not hurt. Instead they will give you gold coins if and only if you didn't take any coins from the monsters directly before the current one. So to marry Princess Farida, you have to pass all the monsters and collect as many gold coins as possible. Given the number of gold coins each monster has, calculate the maximum number of coins you can collect on your way to the castle. Okay, so how do you do this problem? Okay, so let's look at the first test case. We have one, two, three, four, five, and the answer is nine. So that's uh, I basically just labeled one, two, three, four, five here, and uh, our output should be nine. Okay, so how do we get nine? Okay, well, we have to think. Good thing about this problem is that if you think hard enough, you'll be able to get it. Okay, so let's actually start with the first monster. So the first monster is uh, one, and uh, what is a monster of one? Well, um, one, if you're at the first monster, right, there's no monster before it, right? So if remember, if you, if you look at the problem statement, right, you can only pick the monsters if you didn't take any coins from the monster before it. Right, so I only could pick the coins of the current monster if I didn't take any coins before it. So in this case, if I'm at one, there's no, no there's no monster before it, right? So I didn't take any coins before it, so I could literally just pick one, right? Technically, I could just pick one. So if I kill this monster, I could take his gold coin. So I'll just take one, okay? So let, let's say, let, let's, let's look at the number of coins we have. So let's say this is our coins. Now we just pick one, okay? Now let's look at the second monster. Well, if I pick... If I'm at the second monster, right? I only could pick this second monster if I didn't pick any monster before it. But I already did pick the monster one. So I can't actually pick two. You cannot, you cannot pick two. Okay, so in there's only two stages you could do this, right? If I started picking at one, right? Then I would have only picked one. And I can't pick two correct? I can't pick the second one, right? Because uh, in order to pick two, right, the second monster, I couldn't take any coins from the first monster, correct? So that's why you cannot pick any coins for the first monster, so the answer is only one. But now at two, because I couldn't pick any coins from the, first, from the one before it, I can't pick two, right? So I'm going to have to skip this, All right? Now at three, did I pick any monster before it? No, I didn't pick any monster before it, right? I didn't pick any monster, I didn't pick two. So then at this point, I could actually add three. So I'm gonna add three to this, okay? Now add four. Did I pick any monster before this? No, I didn't pick any monster before this. Oh no, I actually add four. At four, I, I picked the monster three, so I can't pick four. So at four, I cannot pick this, so this is bad. Now at five, did I pick any monster before this? Uh, yes, I picked, I, I didn't pick four, I didn't pick four, so I could pick the current monster five. So I'm gonna add five and I'll get you nine, okay? So that's basically the answer how you would get this. Now here's the issue, is that what if the monster you picked, so this is, a, this is what ha would happen if I started at one, right? But remember, you could actually start from two. So like, remember, if I started at, remember, we chose here for the answer to be nine because we started the, the value at one, right? We couldn't pick the value before it. That's the reason why, right? So we just started at one, right? There's nothing before it, so we just started at one. But technically, you could just pick starting from two. And the reason why is that in now, instead of starting at one, I'm not going to pick the values at one. So I could just pick start from two. So in, the, in this case, my coins would be two, right? And then um, then I go to the next one. Okay, well, did I pick the coins before this? I did, I did. So that's why I can't go to three. So for three, I'm gonna skip. So right here, I'm gonna skip, so I'm not gonna do three. Then at four, did I pick the ones before it? No, so I could pick the coins at four, so I pick four. And then five, did I pick coins before it? Yes, so I can't pick five, so this would be six. So if we look at 
these values, right? We only could pick um, choices of the coins if you didn't pick the coins prior to it, correct? So if you would think about this using um, using your solutions, right? You should. You might be thinking, okay, maybe what if I just skip every two, like every single two values I skip, and I just pick the values for that. Now you could do that. But um, you don't know which one is the best version of which or not, right? I can't just go to one, two, three, four, one, three, five, seven, nine, because sometimes um, that might not be the best possible outcome. So what do we do? We store each po best possible outcome in an array called DP. So in this array DP, the ith, ith value is going to represent the most optimal coins taking so far. And the... Uh, the, yeah, the i that I represent so far are the most optimal coins you picked so far. And i minus 1 is going to represent the optimal uh, coins you picked prior to it. So um, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. So uh, here's what we're going to do. For each value here, we're going to store, store it into a, an array called dp. So this is going to be the optimal solution. Okay. So first of all, uh, let me just quickly look at the code real quick because uh, I actually don't, uh, I don't remember. Okay, yeah, I remember this. Okay, so in the first two, one and two, um, the DP is just going to equal to one and two. Okay, so the reason why it's equal to one and two is because those are the first two choices you could pick, right? If I pick one, then I can't pick two, right? And if I pick uh, two, then I can't pick uh, pick one. Right, so at the second choice, it's just going to be whatever this maximum you could pick from one and two, and at the first choice, it's just going to be just the first choice, right? Okay. Now from three, now what I'm going to loop is I'm going to loop through from the second choice to the end of the array. Basically, I'm going to loop through from the second choice to the end of the array, and what am I going to do? Well, from the second choice to the end of the array, I'm going to store the most optimal solution at the current value. So in this case. What is the most optimal solution? Well, if I pick three, right? If I pick three, I only can add this three to the answer that is uh, most optimal solution if I pick three. Because if I pick three, I only could pick three if I didn't choose a choose the monster coins before it, right? If I didn't choose the monster coins before it, right? So what is the most optimal solution starting from three if I didn't pick the choice coins before it. Well, it's the value that I chose two, two, uh, two choices ago, right? If you think about it, right? Like if, if I had added something prior to here, like if I added a uh, two here, right? Two here, then um, I can't, I couldn't pick three with two because this would have been chosen, right? If I picked three with two, that means that uh, that means I've killed the monster prior to it, the monster before it, and I can't do that because it's it's not allowed, right? If you look at the problem statement, you only can pick monsters if and only if you didn't take monsters directly before the current one, right? So it's not allowed if I pick the ones before it. So the the choice you could only pick is the ones is the choice you picked two uh, i minus two, so the ones before before the ones that before the other one, so. Before two, I picked one, right? So I picked this one. So if I wanted to pick this one, what would be the number of coins I have? Simple. It would be the ones two choices ago that I picked here, i, plus the one that I currently have, which is three. So it just could be one plus three. So that gives me four, right? So that's picking the values of two choices ago if I picked the current value. But what if I didn't want to pick the current value? Right. What if I didn't want to pick the current value? Remember, I want the maximum value, the ma most optimal solution for every coins for each of the, our array. Well, you have to compare this new value with the choice you picked prior. So the choice that you picked before, if I instead of picking starting from one, let's say I want to start from two. Well, if I'm starting from two, then that means that uh, I couldn't have picked one. Right? I couldn't pick one because one is before two. Right. So if I, I have to compare the current value that I added of three plus one, so I have to pick three plus one, which gives me four. And I have to compare this four with the the value of prior to it of two, because if I pick 
four and uh, if I choose four and two, um, I need to get the maximum value in order to store in my current optimal solution of DP. So in this case, uh, which one is greater, four or two? Well, four is greater, so I'm gonna maintain the state of four. So four is gonna be my DP state here, okay? Then I'm gonna start go to the next value. All right, I'm gonna go to the next value. So what is the next value? Well, the next index is four, okay? Well, if, if I'm picking four, right, how can I pick the current solution of four? How can I pick this? There's, how can I pick four? Well, in order to have picked four, then that means I couldn't have picked the one before. The current have picked three in the solution of three, right? I couldn't have picked this because this 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 solution of three is um, this solution of three would only I wouldn't have only picked it if um, if because in order in order to pick three, that means I wouldn't have picked the one prior to it. So in order to pick four, right? I have to choose the values two twice before it, right? The one just before it. So in this case, I would have to pick two. So uh, which value would, if I pick four, which value would I have to do? I would have to do four plus two. Okay, four plus two. So I'm gonna store the value of four plus the value of two. And that's gonna give me six, right? That's gonna be six. And I have to compare this six with the one that I stored prior to it, in case if I didn't wanna pick the value of four. So in order to do that, I have to compare six and four. So which is the maximum of six and four, and that's gonna give me six. So the answer here would just be six, okay? Now we're gonna be at five, okay? Now we're at the solution of five. And uh, what is what do we do at this solution of five? Well, in order, in order to have done the, in order to have picked five, that means I couldn't have picked four. So in order to pick, I couldn't have picked four, that means that I'm gonna take my five and I'm gonna add it to the optimal solution two times before it, or twice before it. So what is the optimal solution of five twice before it? It would be four here, right, four here. So I'm gonna take this five and I'm gonna add it with the optimal solution twice before it of four. So I'm gonna be five plus four is gonna be nine. Then I have to take this nine and I have to compare it with the one that I had before of six. Because in the case of if I didn't choose five, then um, I would have had this uh, solution of six. So in this case, I'm gonna take nine Pair it with six, and which is greater nine. So uh, maximum of nine and six is going to equal to nine, and that's going to be my answer. Then at the end of the DP array, we're going to return this value nine. So that's basically how this solution works. All right, and let's look at the code now. Okay, so here I have um, I read the number of test cases t. I read in t, and I read in the number of n. Okay. All right. Um, this is a this is a slight case. You have to watch out for it. Um, if we have n is equal to zero, then we have to print out zero, okay? And um, also another thing you have to realize is that uh, case, this is uppercase case and then i, uh, k, you have to print out the case number, current case, and then the current uh, number you have because that's just one that have what they wanted to output. So like if you look at case one, case two, if you have two cases, you have to print out case one, then your answer of nine, and then uh, the second case, which uh, your input statement and the the solution for that case also. So for that, um, for the special case of n equal to zero, you, you have to print out case and i. Okay, so our my index of i is just representing looping through from the current te test case. Okay, from one to t. So I read in number test case and loop through from one to t, and then I print out zero. Okay, and then I do a continue to skip to the next test case. All right, so now add, um, Now I have to create my two arrays. So here I have vector long long int, which is gonna represent the array. And uh, then I have the vector int long long int represent dp, my dp array, the story of the current optimal solution. So now here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through all the values of my array, and then just read in all the values, right? Read in all the values of my dp array of r of i, okay? And what am I gonna do? Okay, so this is gonna be a little, a little, a little tricky, a little difficult. Okay, so uh, it's actually not that difficult. Okay, so at the current solution of dp is zero, I'm gonna set it to the first value of my array. So that's just like the same thing of what I explained prior hand, right? For one, 
uh, if you pick the value of one, you couldn't have picked the ones before it. So the only solution you could pick if you pick the value of one is just going to be dp of one. So that's just going to be dp of one for that case. Okay. And then the second solution, uh, second case, dp of one at the uh, at one, uh, that's just going to be the maximum of the first and second number. So the, the maximum of the first, second number one and two is just going to be two. So that's why we do dp of the zero and one, which is going to give us two. Okay. So yeah, that's what we store here. Maximum of the prior number and r of one. All right. Now, uh, in order to build our dp array, we're going to loop through from two to the, we loop through two, starting index of this part. Um, this is a, this is index from index. Uh, okay. So this this is actually the array this is the array and um remember we're actually indexing my my array is here is indexed from zero but you can index it from one any in, uh, in your solutions it really doesn't matter but yeah uh i i indexed it from zero so my starting index is going to start from two and i'm going to loop through to the value of n okay now what do i do um, for every optimal solution, I'm going to take the previous choice that I had, i minus 1, so dp of the previous choice I had, compare it, and it's going to equal to the maximum of the previous choice I had and the previous choice that uh, I had two choices ago plus the current value I have currently. So remember, that's going to compare the previous choice you have currently in order to pick the current value of my current value of 3. That means two choices ago, I have to add uh, the choice that I had two choices ago of one plus three, right? I can't, you can't pick, you can't add the previous choice here because they said that you only can pick coins, um, you only can pick coins if you didn't pick the coins directly before the current one. So that's why it, your answer would have to be two choices ago. So it would be the DP of the two choices ago plus the current value at I, and you have to find the maximum of your previous choice. So yeah, that builds up your DP array. Then you have to print out your case and the current case number, and then you have to print out uh, dp of n minus one, which is the last value of your dp array. And that's your case space proceeded. So yeah, that's basically the just how to do this problem. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, uh, remember my array ll long long is just representing the um, uh, long long int. I actually use ll as long long int because um, the, the test cases was pretty large. So yeah, I use long long int. But, you, but I, I don't know if you could use long long, but yeah, that, that doesn't matter that much for our vector for our array. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.